to PNC Arena in Raleigh, the home of the Wolfpack today. NC State eager to bounce back from an opening day loss as they host the Detroit Mercy Titans. And this one should be a lot of fun, and we are so glad you decided to join us alongside former ACC Player of the Year, Mike Jaminski. I'm Bernie Gunther. Well, the Wolfpack fans, they may be disappointed with the start of the season, but they have a lot of reason to be optimistic this year. Well, and uh, a new season this year and a new schedule, 20 games, and they open with an ACC opponent and uh, play Georgia Tech overtime without their two best players. They want to bounce back and get a home win, though. Well, the good news for the Wolfpack is they get Markel Johnson back in the lineup. Double figures a year ago, and he led the team in assists. Yeah, and really his game has changed over the years. Uh, more of an assist guy early on, but had to step up and be a scorer last year. A very good three-point shooter. They need him to be healthy all year. But if you like sharp shooting, you are in for a treat today. Antoine Davis for Detroit Mercy. He's probably the best shooter, the pure shooter in the entire country. Right, and he got overshadowed a little bit, I think, by the star power that was in that freshman class last year. But uh, you see the numbers there, 26 points a game. Um, set a rising league freshman scoring record and that three-point record actually broke Steph Curry's record so uh, this this guy can really play should be a lot of fun here in Raleigh the Titans taking on the Wolfpack will tip it off when we come back to the PNC Arena College Hoops is brought to you by the Works Tryback. Now 10% off. Order now. Well, indeed, it is a beautiful day here in Raleigh inside PNC Arena. They are set for basketball. Detroit Mercy opening up their season against NC State. And uh, fresh faces for Detroit Mercy. And we know about Antoine Davis, but the question is, Mike, who's going to help him out? And, uh, yeah, I think Mike Davis is still in the process of trying to figure that out. I mean, last year, 13 different guys started for this team, which is, which is a record. And the good news we told you about earlier, NC State, Markel Johnson is going to get a start. Also to note, C.J. Bryce, he scored 24 points in the opener against Georgia Tech. Game number two of the season here in Raleigh. And opening tip controlled by NC State and the Wolfpack, Braxton Beverly. Opens it up, three-point shot, didn't waste any time to get on the board. I think that's, you know, the return of Markel Johnson is really going to take a lot of pressure off of uh, Beverly. You know, it's not going to have to be much of a, that, that much of a ball handler. It's going to free him up to be a scorer. This is Isiani giving up to Marquise Moore. Our first look at Davis. Isiani for three. Does he have the answer? He does indeed. So that's, he's a, uh, maybe a little bit smaller, but uh, he, he has the ability. He's got good range. 6'8". Can pick and pop. Nice size to him as well. And you will see a lot of zone in this game by Detroit Mercy. Probably the whole game. Helms double team gets it out to Bryce. Who had 24. Helms in the corner. Doesn't go. NC State, they started off really hot in the first half against Georgia Tech, but then they hit a cold streak in that second half, allowing. Georgia Tech to get themselves back into the game. In fact, Georgia Tech didn't lead, as we see. Davis for three. He's got it. They didn't lead until overtime. We talked about his ability to score a ball, and Beverly you know, kept him in front, didn't let him drive, but uh, he's got such great range. And a turnover for the Wolfpack, and now Detroit Mercy already leading early on. So you don't want to give a team like this hope. I mean, they're they're still trying to find themselves, but if they get up to a quick start in your building, it's not a good sign. Two-point shot didn't go for Davis. This is Beverly back the other way. They kick it over to Bryce, and there's another turnover. Back-to-back -back turnovers as Davis gets it ahead, and NC State's going to get it back as Bryce gets a handle on it. Bryce trying to get a basket and transition, and he will. He was the one bright spot against Georgia Tech. Uh, 24 points, 11 rebounds for him in that game. Really was the reason they were in that game. Um, and I thought on the other end, that decision by Antoine Davis in transition, not a good one, and led to an easy basket. And Siani picked up his dribble, needing some help. 
Finally gets Davis to break free. Isiani for three, way offline. Let's take a look at our Hardy's star watch. And we told you about C.J. Bryce, double figures 21 times as a junior. And he already started the season 11 for 17 from the field against Georgia Tech. Well, we talked about it without uh, Funderburk and Johnson in the lineup. They needed somebody to step up, and, uh, and he, he, he certainly did his part. And uh, very high percentage from the field, too, 11 to 17. Speaking of which, C.J. Bryce from the outside, and NC State up by two. Senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. He has been a part of Kevin Keats teams all five seasons. Coming over to be a part of the Wolfpack. Messiani, and there's gonna be a foul against Helms as we take a look at our four keys to the game, Mike. Uh, it's a little bit of hitting against pitching in uh, in this game. And uh, for Detroit, they got to value the ball. Um, you know, they they really did a nice job of that last year, getting good at possessions. And for NC State, they want to set the pace. They want to get out and run. They want to defend, get steals, and score on the open floor. Messiani for three. It's kind of hot and cold. That's what we heard from Coach Mike Davis. Hits the first and then completely misses the next two. Beverly for three. He's fouled and he'll go to the line. Good call. You know, we've seen that a lot on the NBA level. And uh, you just got stepped under. You're, you're allowed a space to come down. And he goes up and shoots. And really not a great decision that time by Brandon. Beverly last year logged over a thousand minutes the most of any player on the floor and he hit 136 three-pointers in his first two seasons at NC State. This Wolfpack team, they've been a high-powered offense. This is a team that likes to score 80 or more. Yeah, Kevin Keats, is, that was, when he came in here, that was really his mission statement. Uh, that was his M.O. down at UNC Wilmington. Always had teams that like to get up and down the floor, and he said, this team's going to score some points. 8-0, NC State run. The thing about it defensively, without Thunderbird, they don't really have, they, they really miss his presence inside defensively. No word on when he is going to come back off the suspension. Justin Miller just getting in shape. Blocked down low by Bates. He had five blocks against Georgia Tech, and he's got one early on here. And the other way, Beverly flips it. Manny Bates, the freshman, with a stop. He got to reward the big guy. You know, does something for you defensively. And then, uh, you know, Bates is and he's, he's really raw offensively, but one of the things he can do is block shots. And has some full court pressure. Gets the pressure. Manny Bates, what an intro he had on Tuesday night against Georgia Tech. He creates an opportunity. And the Wolfpack stuffing it in on a 10 0 run. Third season for Kevin Keats, and in fact, it has been a rise of the pack, and he felt like that his season ago might have been even better in ACC play than it was his inaugural year where he made the tournament. And on the flip side, Mike Davis, everybody remembers when he followed Bobby Knight and took Indiana to the national championship game. Now he's got a new mission. It's to rebuild Detroit Mercy and the Titans. Yeah, and that was a, boy, that was a tough situation to be put in the following uh, Bobby Knight's departure from Indiana, and uh, he performed admirably in that situation. It's been known as a program rebuilder, and uh, that's what he wants to do, reestablish uh, Detroit Mercy. Beverly has six early on. He's got the basketball. And, uh, you know, for Kevin Keats, uh, he, he had outstanding a few years down at UNC Wilmington, as I had said earlier. Over the back foul. Three-time SWAT coach of the year, Texas Southern. Brought him to the NCAA tournament. You see Indiana, UAB, Texas Southern, and he feels like the rebuilding process at Detroit Mercy, that's what brought him most to the job of wanting to, to go to Detroit and do something special. He's got a pretty special ally to him too, and Dick Vitale, yep. so the court up there is named after him. 
says he stays in touch and, uh, and you know Mike Davis understands that this is this is going to be a process not something that's going to happen overnight they try to feed Bates inside taken away by Legrand and here's Legrand back the other way a little out of control picked up the dribble question is who can help out Davis it's a player that scored as many as 48 in a basketball game and as you can see there there's not a spot on the floor that he can't score from well, and the incredible thing too is he's, he's gonna see at least two shirts you know Bernie, every every time he touches the ball and he still has shown the ability to get the shot off off the dribble Andre for three he can't connect Andre connected on a bunch of threes early on against Georgia Tech into the basketball game Davis Kicked it out. This is LeGrand down low. Jump ball. And the basketball will be long to the Titans. Detroit Mercy, 114th year of basketball, the oldest D1 program in Michigan. They've been in the Horizon League since 2001, 2002. Six NCAA per, uh, tournament appearances, the last in 2012, the last NIT tournament appearance in 2013. How about uh, Dave DeBusher, one of my idols growing up, uh, the, those Nick, Nick, Nick teams that were won championships in the 70s. Spencer, he wasn't have a bad player in his own right. And it's interesting, obviously, because the fact that Davis got the job and then he brings his son onto the program and obviously having Antoine Davis on your team, that's a game changer right there. That's the biggest recruit and it was right in his household. Helms kicks it out. Johnson trying to get his first basket into the corner. Andre for three doesn't go. This is a team, and, and he's really digging himself out of a hole here, too, that they are on probation, academic probation. For their APR our score is falling below the standard level, so they are banned from postseason play this year. Can still play for the uh, Horizon League championship, regular season championship. Brad Calipari, the son of John Calipari, Kentucky basketball coach, missing over there in the corner. And on the flip side, Devin Daniels, the junior from Battle Creek, Michigan, makes it 15 to 8 in favor of the Wolfpack. A lot of star power on the Titans squad. You think about Calipari, Davis, another son of the coach, Dwayne Rose Jr., nephew of uh, Derek Rose. Speaking of which, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, Detroit Mercy starting to sneak back into this game. Some good three-point shooting. Calipari known as a good three-point shooter. Probably just got tired of hearing his dad yell at him all the time. And uh, he's actually got graduated in three years. He's got two years of eligibility left. Beverly, the leading scorer. He's got nine. Seven-point NC State lead. Rose. A little bit of trouble here is Calipari. Second ten, uh, second call. There's the look. Is there a nice flying The late closing out on that three. And then uh, good ball movement here. Swing side to side. Beverly, is, he's really had some great looks from the outside. Bernie. A year ago, he broke his hand in preseason practice and then missed the first game of the season. And that was one of the things, getting a chance to talk to Kevin Keats about playing Georgia Tech early on. see Andre for three is the team obviously wasn't at 100% in that ACC opener. Again, an expanded schedule, 20 games of ACC play. But he didn't feel like, as you see Davis miss from the outside here for three, that any of the, the top marquee games, the teams are up to 100% early on. Three-pointer doesn't go for Markel Johnson. That's, that was the, the one thing that Kevin Keith said about um, you know, opening with an ACC game. A lot of the teams that don't have a good feel for themselves, um, you know, right, right at that moment. And then you get a guy who's uh, under suspension and a guy who's hurt. And it's a quick early L in the league. Daniels. Good ball movement. Johnson still can't get his first basket of the year. Davis. Man, he gets.
gets a whole swarm of the Wolf Pack to follow him around. Moore was wide open. Now he will take a much more difficult shot, and this is off the glass. Ahead to Bryce, and a basket in transition for the Wolf Pack. So you take, if you take a shot like that that surprises your team and is a bad shot, usually results in a fast break, and uh, the Wolf Pack very quick up the floor. Green gives it back to Davis. Ten to shoot. Davis creating the shot. Man. Players are going to that. Uh, James Harden has made that little step back. A, a very popular shot. It's a great way to create separation. And a good feed down low to Helms. And NC State already leading by nine here early on in the first half. Yeah, five assists on uh, eight made baskets. Great ratio. He can score in buckets. Candy Davis already with nine points for Detroit Mercy. He's got nine of the 15. I think that's going to be a constant theme throughout the year for this ball club. Andre finally connects from three-point land. North Carolina State moving it in transition and CJ Bryce who led the pack in scoring all of them. Well, let's take a look at the Honda dealers of the Carolinas startup. Well, we know that Stephon Curry had 122 three-pointers made as a freshman. Now meet Antoine Davis, who broke his record last year as a freshman. Yeah, incredible uh, feat. And really, for Steph Curry, uh, Davidson was the only team that offered him a D1 scholarship. Uh, Bob McKillop having the foresight to do that. And we know how that story is turning out right now. And uh, you wonder if the same thing is in store for Antoine Davis. Certainly off to a great start. We heard about the amount of reps that Davis takes in a gym. It's really incredible. Uh, a thousand shots uh, as a part uh, of his practice routine, needing to hit 25 in a row from a, a spot on the floor before he moves on. That's an accuracy there. Yeah, and that's uh, that's, that's, that's hard work and, and desire. And uh, just, uh, you, 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 you could see. I mean, he's got pretty good form. So, but uh, you add. You had the, uh, the repetitions on top of that, and uh, you break record, records that way. It seemed like the biggest story for Davis in the offseason from freshman to sophomore year was just trying to bulk up and put on some weight as we see Chris Brandon race to the hoop, cap the basket, he'll go to the line. Not a good closeout that time defensively, giving up the baseline. Okay. To come out and uh, you know Andre just gave up too much in a very ex <laughs> explosive move by Chris Brandon nephew of former NBA player and head coach John Lucas didn't get a whole lot of opportunity last year averaging only two and a half points a game Mike Davis got the job late at Detroit Mercy and uh, when you get it late it's hard to really put together a roster Five eighteen, NC State in the lead with 10 minutes to play here in the first half. Bryce, Bates, good ball movement. Andre now inside the three-point bucket, and she's got five in the basketball game. Yeah, I think if they, when they go high-low, that you're probably going to see Andre up top because uh, the better shooter wanting to keep Bates closer to the basket. They are pushing it again, and that time Daniels couldn't finish. He'll go to the line, however. And Daniels coming off a tough shooting night against Georgia Tech, only 4 of 14 for him. And you can see again the pace that NC State wants to play at. And he feels that Kevin Keith feels comfortable right now with nine, nine to ten guys. I can sign 12 autographs in six seconds. So reminding you to check your battery this fast, easy. Get out! 
Yeah, Daniel scored 16 times in double figures a year ago. He's actually third on the team with 22 blocks. This is a team that has a, a hand on really being disruptive. They led the ACC forcing turnovers back-to-back -back years. Last year, forcing an average of almost 15 turnovers. That's what helps, too. You got a young freshman in Manny Bates at 6'11", and he's a shot-blocking machine early on. Yeah, that time coming over as the, uh, the second guy in, and that's uh, normally the best way to block a shot. The only thing he didn't do was keep it in play so they could get a fast break out of it, but uh, still good weak side help. Justin Miller trying to get Detroit Mercy going. Davis double teamed. Apton Miller for three. Doesn't go. But the Titans hustle down and get the rebound, and they get a wide open look for Davis, and he hits it. So if you, get, you get a rebound on a three, and it's uh, almost forgiven. You're going to get another look at a three. And, uh, the only problem, really, that uh, Mike Davis had with Miller is that they have to get him in shape. Daniels with a feed to Bates down low. Well, if, if, you know, if, if, if he's going to score like that, he's going to hurt you. You know, if, if, if they can penetrate and let him play, that's how he's going to score off of penetration and offensive rebounds. And eight assists early on on the 11 field goals made. On the flip side, he's averaging about a point a minute. Yeah, he got a nice little screen right there, and uh, that, was a, that was a good draw and pitch. It's getting behind the zone. Legrand looking for help, feeds it in. Willie Asiani, the sophomore, grew up in Georgia just down the road. And Jordan Gorman draws the foul. And it's on Beverly. His first. Nine point will pack lead. these teams putting in some fresh players as you see Legrand offensive foul looking at a lot of players here on Detroit Mercy is play, play by Daniel stepping in that time Beverly for three got it he's got He's really taking advantage of it that time for uh, Detroit Mercy for the Titans. It was a really compact zone, and, uh, and Beverly had another great look at it. They turn it over, and oh, Daniels can't finish, and the loose ball is going to be picked up by Essiani. Twelve-point NC State lead. They need to work with Davis on the bench. Messiani and Bryce is going to be whistled for the foul. Wolfpack looking good at home early on, leading by 12 behind the sharpshooting of Beverly. Now C.J. Bryce coming off his sixth double-double of his career, 24 points, the most in his career at NC State, following up with seven points already today, Mike. And, uh, you know, not a high-volume shooter, either three or four burning in this game and showing that he can score at three different levels, uh, getting out and running. He's got that little mid-range game, can take it off the dribble and can knock down a three. They played all but 35 seconds in that season opening overtime game. A lot of minutes being played. Uh, you know, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of guys complain about playing time. We <laughs> didn't have to worry about that the other night. <laughs> 35 strikes in the first season for the Wolfpack. Led the team with 40 steals. Important little stretch here for both teams uh, as they finish out the first half. I think the, you know, the Titans have done a nice job keeping it fairly close. They can't let this game really blow up out of shape in this last uh, 7.30. Look at the difference on the fast break points and points of the paint dominated early on by NC State. And a lot of that is 
than Manny Bates and then uh, dunks in transition. Well, the good news for the Titans is Davis back on the floor. Leading them in scoring with 12. Isiani way off for three. And the loose ball picked up by Gladwell, and he's going to go to the free throw line with a chance for a three point play. Well, this is one of the things uh, the Wolfpack during the stretch has not done a great job defensive rebounding. Uh, they've given the Titans a couple of second chances here and uh, three point opportunity. Bo Gidjul played in 20 games a year ago. Six foot eight sophomore. And a foul down low. Against CJ Bryce. It's going to be one on one now for the Titans. Titans only three personal fouls, so there are there are ways away from giving the Wolfpack the, the same opportunity. So it's a, a plus for them as they go down the stretch here. We're going to get into that one-on-one -on -one situation in the bonus. Bryce goes to the bench. Bates is on the bench with two fouls. And Helms gets the board. With the Wolfpack up by 10 with seven minutes to play here in the first half. Talking with the people around the program, they said Helen said it improved as much in the preseason as anybody in the team. Johnson feeds inside to Daniels with five to shoot, and he rattles it in. Back up now over 60% uh, for the half. They've hit seven of their last eight from the field. Davis trying to create, and he turned it over. Daniels stole it away, and then Beverly, lazy pass, and how about Antoine Davis coming in to steal it away? Well, that's great hustle after uh, missing the shot and then chasing the play down from behind. And I, th I think that NC State has had their best success guarding him with bigger covers. You know, he's, he, he's been able to score against Beverly. Uh, you know, just get, getting caught in traffic right there. He makes a break, but then uh, running the play down from behind, showing great hustle. Second foul on Braxton Beverly. Davis 86% from the free throw line. That's Mike Jaminski type numbers. Hey, they, three points, man. Same shot, same distance, nobody guarding you. You see, he shakes his head one of two when you're shooting 86%. Yeah, yeah you, when, you're shooting 80, yeah, that. when you're shooting 87, you remember all the misses. Another, another way, he's a lot like Steph Curry. 13 points, 5 of 7 from the field. You can see that those 1,000 shot practice, they're paying dividends for Davis in the basketball game. But his team trailing by 11 feet down low. And Andre, he's showing me that he could do it outside and inside as well. Well, yeah, and, and they're, they'll really benefit if he becomes a consistent three-point shooter to give them an outside threat. But uh, nice showing that he can score inside as well. Andre played his first three seasons at Lehigh, where he started nearly every game as a sophomore and a junior. Davis spin move, cannot hit. And rebounded by Devin Daniels, NC State. They've hit eight of their last nine from the field. It'll be swatted away, and they'll continue to have Johnson kick it into the corner. Andre for three, does not go. And Gidrew will have the board for the Titans. NC State 38% for the field against Georgia Tech, shooting 61% in the first half today. Yeah, it's interesting, too, that 13 of their 23 field goal attempts have been threes. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> there's a look that's uh, just, uh, again, they've, they've done a decent job getting behind the zone that time. But really not a great shot blocker out there for, uh, for the Titans. 
But Bates has, has, has uh, had some success getting in there with lobs and some layups. Pat Andre is one of the reasons why a lot of people feel like this Wolfpack team, they have improved their sharpshooting this year. His father, Tim, played basketball in Notre Dame and went on to get drafted by the Bulls. So some great family teams there as the ball picked up by Johnson. Beverly again for three. And that time, Chris Brandon comes down with the board for the Titans, 37-24. NC State with four and a half to play in the first half. Davis has tried to do it all, and that time he does create a look, and Brandon is there to finish up. Well, he gets he gets the switch. They put a big body on him, but he's able to go by him off the dribble. Great creative play. You would think with all the defenders drawn to Davis, it would create a lot of really good looks for his teammates. And Helms fouled in the paint. Well, I, th I think, you know, two things are going to happen here. You know, Mike Davis is going to see how this team develops. I don't, I don't even know if he knows what he has. And then, you know, as other teams get more tape on them, I'm sure the uh, de you know, defense will change. Second foul on Brandon. Helms came off the bench all 36 games as a freshman. He told you 15 points against Georgia Tech. It's a player that uh, comes from Chaminade High School in St. Louis, third in high school history behind the likes of uh, Bradley Beal. Jason Tatum as well. Uh, Some good lineage there. <laughs> the coach, the coach must have a heck of a career record. <laughs> Full court pressure extended. By the Wolfpack, four minutes to play. And Dwayne Rose Jr. in the paint floats it up too short. Got his own miss. And the second time's the charm for Rose. Oh, he's, got, uh, he's got a nice body to him. Uh, very strong, able to elevate inside. We knew that they'd see a lot of zone. Titans continue to work on the zone. And Daniels dribbled his way right through it. And then Davis comes down with the board. Outlet pass. And Moore took a couple extra steps on his way to the hoop. Timeout here in Raleigh. All NC State. They have forced nine turnovers early on, and they lead by 11. Second game of the season for NC State. And the good news, Mike, is they got Marco Johnson back. He hasn't scored, but again, you see that he was the team leader in assist, and he's leading them in assist today on the floor. Yeah, it, you know, a little rusty. Um, shooting 0 for 3 so far in this game. Uh, maybe good to go in and get a layup, get himself going. But doing it another way is five rebounds, six assists, uh, 15 minutes. So uh, Kevin Keats is giving him some time to get in some game shape. Johnson's a, a player that really improved his three-point shooting from his freshman to his sophomore year. 12 three-pointers as a freshman, 25%. Last year, he shot 40% from three-point land. So you think about having a player like Johnson back on the floor helps you just the fact that the ankle's feeling good enough to give it a go. Daniels missing from the outside. Davis has been the story. And Davis continues to try to create, and that time it goes off his knee, out of bounds, and another turnover forced by NC State. Bernie is, he is so fast with the ball. It's incredible. I mean, he's just got that other gear. He actually stood there and looked for a minute, and then he just almost went by everybody up the floor. And not to take away anything for Anton Davis from the rest of his team, but imagine how much better Davis would be if he had some weapons surrounding him. Yeah, and decided to, you know, with, with the sanctions this year, um, decided to stay at, at school rather than transfer somewhere and, and, and sit out a year, maybe, a, you know, at a, a different program, but uh, showing some loyalty. Tanko foul on Detroit Mercy's bench. Beverly will convert the free throws, and they'll have the basketball, 41-28, NC State. Five made three-pointers in the first half. And they've already forced 10 Titans turnovers. Daniels for three doesn't go. Mitchell with the rebound. 
Yeah, Daniels two is six, and you can see how the Titans have really extended that zone out to try to cover the three-point shooters a little bit better. Miller from the baseline. It's been three seasons at Louisiana Lafayette. Had five double doubles as a junior. So if you can, you know, if you can get down, and lose 20 pounds or so, he'll be. He can stay out on the floor for a lot longer time. They've only played eight minutes so far in this first half. And look at how much better Helms is here in his second season. Creating opportunity there, and it's going to go off the foot. No, it, 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 it looked. It looked like it went off of Miller's foot. It said they went off of Danny Dixon's foot. And the basketball will belong to the Titans. Looks like the right call. Two minutes to play. In the first half, Beverly leading NC State with 14 points. Davis leading the Titans with 13. Five to shoot. Miller going to the hoop. Can't convert. And look at... Detroit Mercy, they are really swarming the rebounds. That was certainly a huge point for them a year ago. They were 340th in the country in rebounding margin. 7-0 to zero offensive rebounds for, uh, for, for the Titans. And you see 19-12 to 12 is the total rebound margin. So the thing is, you know, when they put a quick early shot that time, but whenever they put... Um, when they put Davis in a two-man game, they're, you know, the other guy, the other big, they don't even worry about the screener. They just stay with him and try to get the ball out of his hands. Beverly leading score. Hallam's at the free throw line. And think about how that, how big that is for Detroit to maybe have an answer on the road at NC State to be leading in offensive rebounds, leading overall in the rebounding margin. And it's good news, bad news, because if you're getting a lot of offensive rebounds, you might be missing a bunch of shots as well. That's if, that's if you can get, you know, it'd be great if they can get Isiani going and, um, you know, as a, as a pick and pop guy to have those two in the two man game. I, w I wonder if there's, unless there's a complete blowout. If there's a game that uh, that Davis won't play 40 minutes in this year, <laughs> Miller backing him down and a foul. Mitchell will go to the line. Second foul on. Jericho Helms. Ninth team foul here in the first half. In a 30 second timeout. Detroit Mercy. I would think that Kevin Keats would be happy. You know, they, they've got uh, 10 turnovers. Yep. For the Titans, but not happy with the job the team is doing on the defensive glass. Well, as you say, they've won 32 of 33 non conference games at PNC Arena, lost to UNC Greensboro in 2017. They haven't started 0 2 to start a season since 1993 94 when they lost to Weber State and Green Bay to start the season. Again, whole different look starting the year off with ACC play. So it's not like you're starting with two non conference opponents. I would guess that if you told the coaches, a lot of them wouldn't like starting with an ACC game. But I, for, for the fans, I think it's great. You know, they get, they get two more league games to watch, and I think that's a big pie. If you couldn't convert on the front end of the one-on-one, -on -one, and the basketball back to NC State in the Wolfpack. Dixon kicks it back out. Johnson trying to create now for three. When you're, you know, when you're not shooting, shooting the ball well, that's a tough way to get yourself going. 
you know, fall away three that way. You want to try to get something going to the basket. Three point look doesn't go for Davis. And 15 seconds will remain for NC State to play for the final shot of this first half. The first look for Mike Davis in their first game of the season. They didn't play any exhibition games. And they got to see a lot of good shooting in the first half. Led by Braxton Beverly, 14 points leading the way for NC State in the first 20 minutes of action. Davis led it for the Titans with 13 points. But for NC State, 50% they're shooting from the field. First half in the books here from Raleigh, and it was all Wolfpack leading 43 to 30. ACC hoops from the PNC Arena in Raleigh. It's the Wolfpack leading 43 to 30 at the break. We are just getting started. ACC season will have a doubleheader on Wednesday night. Colgate and Syracuse at 7 o'clock, followed by FIU and NC State right back here at 9 o'clock Eastern. Check your local listings and ACC preseason poll. Duke North Carolina 1 and 2. NC State currently six, and how about Florida State? They took down number six Florida earlier today in Gainesville. Should be another fun season of ACC basketball. When we come back, we'll take a look at our first half highlights, what included the freshman Manny Bates. Big start for the Wolfpack at home. ACC College Hoops is brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Be bold, be confident, live fearless. And your local Ford dealer. NC State leading 43-30 as we walk you back at the half alongside Mike Jaminski, Bernie Gunther, and you see NC State, their second game of the season, a whole lot better shooting than they had against Georgia Tech in the first half. Yeah, especially from the three-point line, very effective there, got out, ran, kicked the ball out, and, uh, you know, C.J. Bryce started, he's kind of pick, picked up where he left off against Georgia Tech, but uh, Braxton Beverly is the one who really got things going for the Wolfpack in the first half. Yeah, hey, think about Beverly and his sharp shooting from the outside, but how about C.J. Bryce coming off 24 against Georgia Tech already with a good start in the first half. Yeah, Joey, we talked about it in a variety of ways, getting to the rim, getting out of the break, the dunk, and the, the, the ability to shoot the three as well, and uh, but uh, Beverly, all four of his field goal attempts from behind the arc. Normally guys like that, though, don't get to the rim or get, get, get to the free throw line, but he was five of five there as well. So a nice combination of scoring. And for Detroit Mercy, it looked like Antoine Davis, he tried to do everything he could to try lift, to try to lift his team. Yeah, and, um, you know, 13 points for him, but uh, you know, had to take 11 shots to do it, 2 of 6 from 3. Only got to the free throw line one time. So I think in general, Kevin Keats has got to be happy, you know, if you give up 13 points to a guy and a half, but uh, happy the way they guarded him. First half stats, 48% NC State from the field. And look at that number, 13 fast break points, and they had 11 assists to only five turnovers. That just shows you the impact that Markel Johnson had getting back in to this game for NC State. Six of those 11 assists for Johnson. We'll be back to PNC Arena with more at the break. Right now, it's the Wolfpack by 13. Well, you cannot beat November in the Carolinas. Beautiful day just down the road in Cary, 60 degrees. And great things outside, great things here inside the PNC Arena, especially if you are a Wolfpack fan as we take a look at 
the top 15 teams, and we got to see a lot of these teams do battle already on day one of the season, Mike. Yeah, there were some great matchups at top four playing each against each other, and uh, Tom Izzo uh, has uh, things rolling again there, and uh, Duke not as flashy, didn't have the star, star power, but I think they're going to be better defensively than they were last year. And don't sleep on Louisville. I mean, uh, Jordan Noor will come in back is one of the key things like Markel Johnson here yep. coming back is going to help both programs. Second half, when we come back, the Wolfpack try to finish out their first win of the year at home, leading by 13 at the break. ACC College Hoops is brought to you by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. And Husqvarna. All-star lawns start with auto mower. Busy Sunday downtown Raleigh. Getting set for the start of the second half. 43-30. Wolfpack on top of the Titans. We talked about it at the onset. Markel Johnson getting back on the lineup. Six assists for him. 13 points for Anton Davis. Johnson 0 for 4 for the field. You told me that he just really needs a, a nice close look just to get him going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the good thing is that it doesn't look like he's pressing. But you can tell, I know inside he's just dying to see that first shot go through the basket. And then all of a sudden, you know, the thing, everything opens up for him. And uh, so it was funny, he was watching uh, Antoine Davis uh, sitting on the bench, um, trying to get a little bit of a rest. I think that may be the only time he sits on the bench. Uh, he, he, he did get a minute and a half rest in the first half. Not much. Johnson's got the basketball to start the second half. NC State trying to get their first win of the season. Johnson and a crowd kicks it out to Bryce. Ten to shoot. Bryce wide open for three. Comes up short. And say it was last touch by Bates. Nice look. And, and you can see the zone, Bernie. They're, I think they're, they're, they're locking in on Beverly a little bit more, paying attention to where he is, try to limit his looks in the second half. And the flip side is interesting because you think about Kevin Keats. He didn't even have any film to study on Detroit Mercy and the Titans because they played two exhibition games behind closed doors. Yeah, there were scrimmages, and I, you know, I was curious. I asked Mike Davis about that, and he said, well, you know, you, if you play an exhibition game, you can get in foul trouble, and you can't get a look at your whole team. But when you when you scrimmage, you can play as, as much as you want, and you can you know play as long as you want and, and get a good look at everybody on your roster. So I thought that was smart. Only three seconds to shoot. LeGrand will inbound it, and why not get it to Davis? Why and how, how can you not face guard him in that situation and let somebody else get the shot? But that's how quick he is, and Johnson was guarding him. Allen's wide open from the free throw line. And he, you know, if, if he gets going from there, it's going to be a good weapon against the Titan zone. Get him at the high post, make some shots right in the middle. 13 point NC State lead. Moore feeds it in, and LeGrand with a finish. Well, that was a great, great cut. And, uh, you know, we talk about making lazy cuts or making hard cuts to the basket, and that was full out sprint, and he gets a layup. He gets a basket on his first shot of the game. His first points of the season. And Bryce is going to draw the foul. There's the look he just got uh, lost. Helms just lost in that time, and uh, he was able to get it. It was a beautiful pass, too. Johnson will bring it in. Six assists, two turnovers in the first half, 0 for 4 from the field, tripped up on the corner, and they'll say that he stepped out of bounds. No foul. Well, they're going to call the, the, the hook that time. And Johnson 
That's his first personal. And look at Davis. Navigating, they left him wide open in the corner. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah. the best scorer in the land with the basketball. Pretty important you stay with him. Johnson's great feed to Bryce, and he finishes. Now again, there's no shot blocking out there. Um, you see, know, is, is the only one, and he was out front. Look at that. Johnson with seven assists, only six assists total for the Titans. This shows you the impact well, that Johnson it, has getting back into the lineup. Well, too, and, you know, as dominant as, as Davis is with the ball, he's going to take a shot most of the time. Third foul on Jericho Helms. And still tons of basketball remaining, 17 minutes to play in this game. Davis kicks it over to Moore on the baseline, too strong, and in comes Johnson crashing to get the board. Here's Beverly, who was the leading scorer in the first half. Ellum's on the floor playing with three. Beverly wide open for three. And the ball, well, I was going to say, it definitely belongs to NC State. I think his time and got it right. For the most part, the Titans done a pretty nice job in transition defense and not letting the pack get a lot of easy stuff. And that was an uh, easy call. Goes out of bounds, plays only reviewable in the last two minutes of the second half. Bryce puts it up off the glass, and the bank is open on Sunday. 49-34, will pack. Bryce averaged 12 points a game last year. If he can get up into the 16-point range a game, that would be a huge lift for this offense. Moore comes crashing in, and Bates is there. Got a hand on it. He, then, he knocked it out of bounds. I think he was trying to tip it to Helms. That's a look. He's, he's been right there. Yeah, he was, he, was, he was trying to tip it. And... Offensive foul on Davis, his second. And you can see this season as Antoine Davis goes, so does the Titans. Uh, obvious choice as preseason player of the year in the Horizon League. Into Manny Bates. And he is going to be a force to be reckoned with. Bates will go to the free throw line when we come back. His team leads it 49 to 34. <laughs> State leading 49-34. Our Toyota Let's Go Places. Mike Davis, he is taking his team a, a trip around the continental United States. Well, and, and this is the thing with programs like this, where they, they have to play these games. They're, they get paid a lot of money. They put a lot into the coffers of the athletic department. That represents 10,000 miles worth of travel for this team in the first seven games. Hopefully they're driving Toyotas when they're on the ground. <laughs> but uh, a lot of time in the air. And I uh, asked Mike if he, got a, if he got those frequent flyer miles and he just shook his head no. <laughs> but he, we talked about made the national championship game when he was at Indiana. But then he was Conference USA Coach of the Year at UAB. SWAC Coach of the Year three times when he was at Texas Southern. The Merck's Tri-Back 3-in-1 Easy Switch from Blow to Vac is a game changer and a time saver. Your yard work champion. He brought the team at Texas Southern to the NCAA tournament twice. Again, he realizes the rebuild project. Not going to happen this year for Detroit Mercy, but it's all about building that foundation, getting them to believe, and he feels like 
of course, taking his team around the continental United States, it's about as good of a test as he can ask for his team to be prepared for playing in the Horizon League. Ellums, 4-3, way off. Wasn't a good look there. Yeah, and this, uh, 20 seconds on the shot clock there, so an, an early shot that you can get just about any time. Uh, there been, uh, there, you know, been some turnovers for this team, but the Titans aren't giving Davis a lot of help in the backcourt. But they thought that B.J. Maxwell, who's a senior from Austin, Texas, was going to help them out. But then he tore a ligament in his hand right before the start of the season. He was at Abilene Christian. Nice, nice hustle that time by... Uh, by Beverly, but interesting to note that he has not scored in the second half yet. So, you know, the, the Titans locking in on him. And his shot was blocked by Bates, and the other way the putback is good by C.J. Bryce, and Bryce has got 13. Yeah, nice job that time. You never take for granted your teammate's going to make a layup or get a dunk, and uh, nice follow-up on the play. Get Jewel in trouble, double team. Kicked it out somehow to Miller, and then Miller's fouled. There's a look. Boy, Bates, is, Bates has been terrific around the uh, around the rim. And then uh, again, that's that's that one, that's that layup that Johnson, you know, he's just like, what do I have to do to make something go in? He gets a pretty good look at it, and uh, but they still get two points. And how about the follow for C.J. Bryce after 24, his sixth double-double of his career against Georgia Tech, following up with 13 here. A season ago, he only averaged uh, 11 and a half points a game. He really improved his free-throw shooting a season ago. The one guy that can hit from the outside and inside, though, is Beverly. Doesn't connect there, but in trying to clean it up is Bryce, but he can't get a handle on the loose ball. It falls to Davis. You know, with the two guys, I mean, they've got a, you know, uh, man, Davis has got a great shot. They've obviously got to get Markel Johnson in shape and have him stay healthy, and that, that will happen, but they've got to get Thunderbird back as well to be a fact. He's, he's, he's a big part of the, of the puzzle. Devin Daniels, the junior, comes flying in. 53-36. 14 minutes remaining here in Raleigh. Miller carded by Andre. Kind of back him down, and it worked. It's my body. Wes Unsell out there. Good ball movement. Andre stepped on the line. And that real estate. You can see again that uh, Davis really kind of locked in on that zone and where Beverly is. Mike, we haven't quite figured out how the new three-point line and it being extended is going to really impact the game. The likes of Beverly, it hasn't affected him I, too far. It's you know what, Bernie? I, I just, you know, watching college basketball the last five years, with the old line, it seemed like guys were three or four feet behind it anyway. I mean, look at that. Beverly, that's from NBA range. Yeah, I mean, but you, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 you know, it used to be the guys would really try to toe up the line, get as close as they could. And, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, up to this year, they're two or three feet behind, and it still may do be that way. Beverly with four made three-pointers, 17 points in this game. Justin Miller down low, and he draws the foul. Here's a look, and again, we talked about the fact he hadn't scored, and that's that's five feet. That is a good five feet behind the, throw, behind the line. You know, he, he was close to being out of bounds on the sideline when he took that shot. Beverly is a freshman and a sophomore, the most three-pointers made in NC State history. And this is a program that has over 100 years of basketball. And he's already continued with four more three-pointers made in this game. He made the point in the first half with Markel Johnson back, even though he's not 
scoring in this game, you can see how much it's freed up Beverly to, to be the, the shooter that he is. Andre down low among the Giants. And he lost a hand on it. Good double team that time by the Titans. And uh, one thing Andre did, he brought the ball down and that brought it into the hand of the guard. That's the fifth team foul. Foul on Daniels, his first, fifth team foul here in the second half for NC State. Rose back on the floor. He's got five points. I'm curious to see how he develops over the course of the season. Nice look again. Justin Miller. He's got eight points now. Like I said, to get him better shape, better fitness, more time out of the floor. He's shown some good offense. Daniels goes right by under the basket. Yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're a guard. You see a guy like that who's defending you, and you know you can get to your right hand. Back into Miller, though. Back it down, Andre. And he's going to call a whistle. Good no call that time. Timeout here in Raleigh. 58-41. We'll back on top. to be happy about if you're a Wolfpack fan today. NCC leading 58-41, and they got Markel Johnson back on the floor preseason, all ACC second team, and you see what he does. He was sixth in the league a year ago in assist. Yeah, and uh, really was amongst the leaders as a freshman, and you see some good high-low shooting right there, and or it's high-low passing. It's a tough one to make against the zone, and when you get a team that's uh, shooting 50%, you're liable to pick up uh, some free throws along the way. A year ago, average 4.2 assists per game. He's got eight assists in this game. Three turnovers, so not a bad rate for him. Three to one. And the big key for Johnson a year ago is he got a whole lot better from three-point range. In fact, he finished fourth in the ACC from three-point land. 42.2 percent but you have the likes of Braxton Beverly kind of picking up that range Andre has come in he's improved NC State from the outside as well and that's the key it really is a coach you want enough players to come around that if you have a player that's not shooting particularly well on one day that they have somebody else that's going to pick up the seat Justin Miller at the free throw line for Detroit Mercy. You know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, they, you know, with the three-point attempts um, in this game, 22, 45, almost half. Um, only been in the line 11 times. You get a, you get, you have to give up something. Miller converts. 58-43. Nice job. Nice production for him. Eight points, three rebounds, and only 14 minutes off the bench. Miller. Johnson for three, right on point, his first points of the season. I mean, there is a basket up there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's amazing how you see, you make that first shot, how the uh, player's body language changes, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Let's see if he goes on a little bit of a run now. Miller back it down. Andre floater up. Doesn't go. Rebounded by Daniels. Johnson says I'll try it again. That time though, a little long. And, and a little early. I mean, he can't help, you know, he can't help but feel that he thought that one was going up anyway after him making his first shot. They keep feeding the big man double team now. Needing some help. by Detroit Mercy. Miller got buried in the corner that time, the double team. We'll take a break as well. A little over 10 minutes to play. NC State in command at home. Well, 20th 
season that Mr. Wolf has called PNC Arena home, and they have been very good at home, over 70% their win ratio. And right now, Wolfpack leading 61-43 with just under 11 minutes to play. Davis on the floor, leading with 17 points. But the 17 still well below his average. A year ago, averaged 26 points a game and scored as many as 48. He's been frustrated. The big man, Miller, on the outside can't connect. It'll be a shot clock violation. Well, well the, the big thing, too, Bernie, is that you, he's 7 of 16 from the field. So you're making him shoot a low percentage, taking shots away from everybody else. And, um, you know, Kevin Keith's talked about the fact that he's really dangerous when he's scoring at a high percentage and also has a lot of assists. When you think about the Wolfpack, this is what they made their hay in the last two years and turning people over. And offensively, we talked about 20-year history for NC State playing here at the PNC Arena. It hadn't been since prior to the days at the PNC Arena that the fans had seen a team that had averaged 80 points a game during the season. It was all the way back to 1996. So it's really brought in a high-powered offense, but it's been led by the defense. It's been the story. Well, and, and the thing, too, when in playing a team like this, it, it's, they're really an unknown quantity. Uh, I mean, you know, tell you, you don't have any kind of film on them, and I have to look at last year, but a lot of those people are gone. And um, But the guy you do know is Antoine Davis, so you, have, can, you can lock in in him and take your chances with everybody else. C.J. Price with the board. Price has got 13. This is Daniels. He feeds Bates inside. And Bates is going to the line. And how much better is Bates going to be when DJ Thunderbird gets back into the lineup? Again, Bates is one of the ones that has really benefited. Here's the look. And uh, see, again, those are the ones. That's where he's been the most efficient, throwing the ball in the air, letting him go get it on the glass. How about Bates, the block machine, down low, six blocks today, five against Georgia Tech, and he's only a freshman. Good chance to lead the league this year in that category. Uh, he you know, keeps rolling like that. Definitely a presence, six foot 11 out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. And his, you know, his, his offensive game will improve, and right now, NC State trying to put this one away with some pressure, but, they really don't need him to be a big time score. You know, they, they need him to do what he's doing, getting some rebounds and uh, just protecting the rim. Not a good look for Davis. Back to Bates. This is a player that missed his senior year in high school in his true freshman season because of injury. So he's waited a long time for this moment. And he's got a good outlet feed there to Daniels. Let's look at the big man do work down low. He's looked, uh, he's been very active, not only getting blocks on his own man, but uh, also help side blocks as well, drivers inside. Nice job keeping the ball in play that time. 985 days since he last played before Georgia Tech. And that's, uh, if you think about it as an athlete, how difficult that task is to, to remain on task and believe that one day you're going to get back on the floor too, right? Well, especially going from high school, right? It was the last time you played to this level. You know, that's, a, that's a jump in and of itself, even if you're healthy. Biggest lead of the basketball game for NC State, 64-43. And Bates has benefited from DJ Thunderbook being suspended the first two games because maybe he wouldn't have seen as many minutes, maybe he wouldn't have had as many opportunities to get the 11 blocks that we've seen him get so far as we see more in the paint. Give it off to Brandon. That one's going to be thrown away. It was Thunderbook last year that was the shot blocker for NC State in the Wolfpack. Go against him in uh, in practice as well. Mothering into the 
game for NC State. His first action of the year. Play against Georgia Tech. Daniels stepped in. And a push off down low. It's Funderburg. Suspended indefinitely for a violation of team rules. But look at his year a year ago. 38 blocks he had. Fans are hoping that that uh, you know, the coach, coach keeps uh, making a statement by uh, you know putting him off the team for three. Father and can't connect. Yeah, good look on the outside for Gidjul. Here's Daniels back the other way. Johnson in traffic. Let's see, you touched it. It'll be NC State basketball when we come back. Get it. Keith Squad in the lead in command, leading 64 43. First three of the year at home for NC State. Take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Wolfpack. They will have FIU here on Wednesday night. A game will have for you at 9 o'clock, and then they will go to the Barclays Center in the interesting game, November 28th, against Memphis. James Wiseman ruled ineligible by the NCAA, but still took the floor on Friday for the Tigers. You don't know what's going to go on there, and got a court injunction at the last minute to, to go out on the floor, and then they get, uh, get Wisconsin right after that, and you know, one of the knocks that the committee had was that NC State had the weakest non-conference schedule in the country last year. All the other numbers were pretty good. Right. Um, and so, but, you know, and in talking to Kevin Keats, a lot of the teams they scheduled last year, they thought were going to be better, but turned out had key injuries and weren't as good as they thought they were. So, you know, it hurt them in that. And they were, you know, there was a new metric that was used last year, and they had a better number in that metric than the last four that got in. He was more proud about the way his team was and handled ACC play last year than his first season in Raleigh. Again, you think about how stacked the ACC was, top to bottom, of course, winning the national championship. I thought that a nine and nine record in the league last year which is what they had gets them in as, as strong as the league was and i was really surprised that they were left out. they even had a victory against auburn a team that ended up going to the final four and it was by double digits right here at the pnc arena and they've really Clamped down the defense on the Titans in the second half. Daniels for three, got it. NC State with eight main three-point baskets. And they've held the Titans without a field goal for 12 and a half minutes. And Davis is going to try to end that stretch as he kicks it in the corner. Brad Calipari, no blocked. Davis finally will end the drought. How about Manny Bates getting a block on a three-pointer? <laughs> Although he, there was nobody there to clean it up, so uh, you know the Titans get two points as a result. Still will be some work to be done by the Titans, man. Yeah. And Davis pick it up where he started in the first half. He seems to be a very right-handed player. Uh, a lot of his shots have come on that right side of the floor. What do you think Davis is going to have to do over his next season or two to get him ready to be a big contributor at the NBA level? I think he's just more physical than anything. Um, you know, I think he's got a, he's got a frame that he can fill out. Uh, you don't want him to lose his quickness, but he's just going to get he's going to get bigger, you know, just by getting older. And that always is a balance. It's obviously he's in the gym. He's bulking up. He's trying to put more weight on. But how's it going to affect that smooth shot that he has? And, and that's, again, that's a, a, a factor of strength, especially in your legs. And it's also going to be a factor of how many minutes he averages a game. Right. You know, and uh, 
and, and what his effectiveness is going to be in the last 10 minutes of the game. He's got 21 points in this one. But it's, it's uh, and I go back to the fact, though, that it's a, it's a, I think it's a 21 points, 22 points now that you can live with. You know, nine of 19, two of eight from three. Hasn't gotten to the line that much. You know, the great players are, are going to get their number. Usually, right. The thing is to make them shoot a, a much lower percentage to get those numbers. And I think that's going to be the big question for the Titans as they head towards Horizon League. As Bates is going to be blocked down low, is who is going to help out Davis? Obviously, Justin Miller. He's been a bright spot today. Because we know that Davis can hit just about anywhere on the floor as he floats this one up, and they're going to get the foul drawn, and Brandon's going to go to the free throw line. <laughs> you know, they, he's obviously seen them a lot in practice, you know, Andre getting the uh, foul there, but, um, you know, I, I think there's still a lot that, that Mike Davis has to learn about this team and, you know, how the rotations are going to shrink up maybe a little bit as they get into league play. Brandon missed the front end with his fourth foul and then he'll go one for two. Brandon with five points. Johnson hit his first three-point basket of the season. Beverly leading score with 17 and Bryce continuing now with 15 in this game. And NC State approaching that magic number of 80 that they got over so many times the first two seasons for Kevin Keats. He shot another low percentage, but if you can continue to get double figures from Devin Daniels off the bench, that's going to be a nice lift. Nice move by Brandon down low, getting by the two bigs. Helms. Tried to get off to Bates, lose ball picked up, and it is put down. Bryce again, back-to-back -back baskets. And Bryce now has 17. A career best 24 against Georgia Tech. And look at how much better his output is than a year ago where he only averaged 11 points a game. Davis with a floater in the lane. Off the glass, it's good. Mark it down that Antoine Davis is going to score 20 or more almost every time he hits the floor of the season for Detroit Mercy. The only question is who's going to help him out. Helms in traffic. Kicked out Beverly for three. He is on the money tonight, folks. Johnson with his 10th assist setting up Braxton Beverly. NC State takes a timeout. Braxton Beverly, 17 points and four from the outside. Four minutes of play, and we are just getting started with ACC basketball. A reminder on Wednesday night, we got a double hunter full game in Syracuse at 7 o'clock. FIU and NC State right back in this building at 9 p.m. Eastern. As always, check your local listings. Braxton Beverly, 20 points. Five three-pointers made from the outside. A career high for three-pointers made in a basketball game. Bouncing back nicely from that Georgia Tech game. Four of 13 in that game, only one of four. Offensive foul. response that Kevin Keats wanted to see from this team after that loss to Georgia Tech on opening night? Yeah, I, I think just from a mental health standpoint, you don't want to you know, start 0-2, you know what I mean, especially, and you don't want to lose home games. Floats it down, and Bates 
is there to clean it up. Manny Bates, the freshman. You can get seven points a game out of him. That's a, that's, that's another big plus. You, know, you, you don't know in Thunderbirds return how that affects his playing time. Seven points in, he's a block factory. Down low, they try to feed Bates again, and he's fouled. So they what, uh, NC State's made some really nice passes from the top of the key if in the free throw line over the zone. I mean, you really have to pick your, you know, you have to pick what you're going to guard. Either, you know, the Titans are going to extend out and defend the three-point shooters, and that's going to leave the back of the zone open for lobs like that. 19 assists, eight turnovers in the basketball game for NC State. 19, 19 assists on 27 and 27 made baskets. Pretty good ratio. Bates one of two. And he'll hold it eight points with his team leading 77-56 with three minutes to play. They forced 14 turnovers in this basketball game. Bates will go to the bench. Yeah, and you wonder about, you know, I know the kid wants to play, but, you know, in a game like this, leaving Davis out on the floor and risking injury to him, Jr. into the corner to Moore. Ten to shoot. Moore will falls back and hits the J. Marquise Moore. He's got four points. Helms. Offensive foul. It's going to be the fourth. And Jericho Helms. Yeah, so you get that left arm extended. Uh, the referee, the, the referee was standing literally five feet away from him on the baseline. So that's an easy call. Tipped off the fingers of Johnson. Troy Mercy will still have the basketball. And Johnson will go to the bench. Graham into the basketball game for NC State. Two minutes to play. Nine to shoot. Good look for three. Wood Jewel hits the three-point basket. It's only the fifth main three-pointer today for Detroit Mercy. They shot 20% for bonus land, 5 of 24. They got fingers on it. Good Jewel helps Detroit Mercy turn it over. And now a fallaway jumper for Davis. Still, still playing hard, like I said, he's, he said his, uh, his best work against Beverly. Davis with 27. And everybody out attacking, and they get the turnover again as Moore gets the steal, and then they give it right back. And Bryce is going to be fouled. Got to credit the Titans. Down late in this game, they are still working to try to force every turnover that they possibly can. And that's a good sign for Mike Davis and his squad. You know, we, we talked to him before the game, and you know, I said, what, you know, what drew you to the, this job? And he, he said, you know, I want to create a culture here and, um, and bring, bring it back to what it once was. And, um, you know, I didn't think that's... That's an example right there with the minute 18 going, and they're still playing hard out in that zone trap. It's that easy. They open up against NC State and Clemson that 
maybe the first truly winnable game for the Titans is when they head to Wyoming. As you see, a three-point look for Rose on the outside. Actually going, they can't win against Clemson, but actually going home. They're going home tonight, and then coming back and playing Clemson. I think it's uh, seven, six or seven days between games. The two truly difficult games as Bryce spins, kicks it out. Braxton. Career best performance. He's got 23. His sixth made three point basket. He's got a career high against the Titans. Yes. Beverly's going to always remember the Titans, isn't he? You were just waiting for that one, weren't you? You had the one. You, were, you had that one in your back pocket. Career high for points and three pointers made. And the place erupting on every miss. And on the free throw line, Davis. Once again, Wolf Pack over 80 points. Got a little chance in this game to uh, play against some zone, work on their zone offense. Now they'll wait if by you on Wednesday night. Falls out. Rebounded by Moore and out of control. Somehow they found a way to get it back. And Good Jewel is going to go to the free throw line with 22 seconds remaining. What a game for Braxton Beverly. Slightly contested. That one was wide open. I mean, he got some incredible looks and really nice passing outside the zone. And when you get a team that's committed to play the zone like that, I mean, look how deep that shot is. We talked about it. That was at least five feet behind the line. And everybody drawn in. 
And, and he was hitting from everywhere. And how about C.J. Bryce? What does he do for an encore? 24 against Georgia Tech and 19 today against Detroit Mercy. Yeah, it's uh, you know as a player you, you get in that groove. Uh, you have a you have a game like you did against Georgia Tech, and uh, you know you're feeling pretty good about yourself in practice. Did a nice job getting out in the open floor. Battle stats in this one. After 38% against Georgia Tech, 48% from the field, including 20 assists. Take a look at that. 20 assists by the Wolfpack today. That shows you the impact that Markel Johnson had in this contest. Yeah, 20, 20 assists, 29 made field goals. That's terrific. A career performance for Braxton Beverly with 23. Our final score, NC State 84, Detroit Mercy 65. Doubleheader on Wednesday night, Colgate Syracuse at 7, FIU NC State at 9 o'clock. Check your local listings. Mike Jaminski and our great crew, Bernie Gunther, saying so long from Raleigh, where the Wolfpack get their first win of the season behind a brilliant performance by their sharpshooting junior, Braxton Beverly.